our objective today is to understand uh, the energy from the oceans. This tremendous energy and we are just beginning to realize the potential of the way, uh, ocean energy. So we'll focus on uh, wave energy and uh, tidal energy, and also a little bit about the energy that we can harvest with the temperature difference in the oceans. So the main learning objectives for our time together is to understand the basics of ocean energy, how it works, basic history of it, the different types and the main, the main pros and cons and the future of energy, wave energy. The, the potential of uh, energy from the oceans is tremendous because here's a world map and we know 70% of the earth is covered by water, by oceans. And it's able to harvest a lot of solar energy that will create a lot of wind. So the amount of energy that you can harvest from the oceans is more than what is needed by humanity. So that's why wave energy is a, has tremendous potential to address renewable, clean energy, energy security uh, for the future. It is non-polluting. And there's so many new technologies that's coming up to harvest the energy that is uh, found in the oceans. The three main types of energy that we will focus on uh, in this uh, class is wave energy, where we come capture the energy in the ocean waves. You know, they are very predictable and you would have seen the waves when you are on the beach it is constant and predictable. So it's a source of uh, potential and kinetic energy. And tidal energy, you know, we've heard of high tides and low tides, uh, which is powered uh, by the gravitational pull of the moon and interaction between the earth, sun and the moon. And it is also very predictable. Uh, so tides also uh, fall under the category of kinetic and potential energy. Ocean Thermal Energy Conversion Systems, or, or OTEC. This, here it's very popular in the tropics where the sun is very hot. The temperature on the surface of the ocean is warm. Whereas if you go deeper into the ocean, it is cold. So you can use this temperature difference in, to generate electricity. So this is an example of heat energy conversion system. And there's also other uh, ones like uh, the energy of the currents, which is kinetic energy, uh, energy of the salinity gradient, which is uh, chemical energy. A very brief history of uh, ocean energy. Um, see, many hundreds of years ago, the power of the tides coming in and going out was used to uh, turn uh, mills in order to grind uh, grain. So this is 1787 in the French, Spanish and British coast. So as the water came in and out, they used it to turn wheels that will grind uh, wheat um, and grains. In, uh, in the 19th century, the tidal power to create electricity was introduced both in Europe and in USA. The first tidal power plant was built in France in 1966. And the first operating farm that produced a lot of electricity supplying millions of home um, came into being in Portugal in 2008. And uh, in USA, there's a big one in Oregon. So this is the world map. And you can see all along the coastline, these are the technologies that are cu currently uh, being developed. So if you just take ocean currents here, in the east coast of USA and also here in Alaska, they can provide a vast, it has vast potential for power generation. And here wave energy here shown uh, a lot in Europe, offshore wind also in Europe. 
And here in Hawaii, the, the United States Department of Energy, they pioneered a OTEC, energy conversion system, which is very uh, efficient. The la world's largest tidal energy was built uh, in uh, South Korea. Again, the ocean energy potential is just tremendous. So here, the one that was installed in South Korea has a power capacity of 511 megawatts, so globally. And in USA, you can see along the East Coast and West Coast. So the Cook Island of Alaska and also offshore Maine, there's tremendous potential. And here, this sentence here proposed by the um, uh, EIA says that the theoretical annual energy potential of waves in USA is estimated to be 2.64 trillion kilowatts hours. That is equivalent to 66% of the US electricity generation in 2020. So all these energy capturing devices from the ocean, some of them like bubble on top like this, and some energy capture, they are like submerged under. And some of them are built along the shoreline. So there's a range of technologies that is used to harvest uh, energy from the ocean. So let's look at the different ways that we can uh, channel the power of waves. Here's a very simple technology. Here you bend or focus the waves into a narrow channel and thereby increasing its strength. And then that will spin turbines that, that will create electricity. Our waves can also be channeled into a basin or a reservoir uh, that can, and then the turbine is at a lower elevation and then it spins the turbine and then thereby making electricity. The ocean thermal, thermal energy conversion, uh, conversion technique, right? So the top of the ocean is warmer compared to deeper into the ocean. So we are making this change in difference in temperature in order to uh, generate electricity. So this method of generating energy uses temperature differences between warm and colder seawater. So this is uh, very popular in uh, tropical regions where the temperature difference is like very high. Like uh, we need at least 77 degrees Fahrenheit temperature difference that will uh, power the turbine. So in this case, the warm water will be pumped through an evaporator that will contain like a working fluid. So this vaporized fluid uh, will then drive the turbine and then that will create electricity in the generator. And the fluid is usually, the vaporized fluid is usually turned back uh, to liquid in a condenser and it is cooled with uh, the cold ocean water that is pumped from deeper in the ocean. So these systems use sea water as the working fluid uh, that, can be, uh, that can be used to condense water and hence has a role to play in desalinization also. So in USA, uh, in, I think in the 1970s, when there was this energy crisis, uh, the National Energy Lab of uh, Hawaii, they uh, were built the, like a very efficient OTEC technology lab. And that produced a lot of electricity um, in, in the 1990s. And it, many other countries followed after that. So here is the experimental OTC plant in Kona Coast in Hawaii. There are many types of OTEC systems. Uh, one is, there is an open one, a closed one, and a hybrid one. So if you take the closed one, the warm water is uh, pumped over a closed uh, loop pipe that is filled with a liquid with very low boiling point, like ammonia. And then the warm water surface will, will evaporate the liquid into vapor that will turn a turbine and then that will generate electricity. And after the vapor passes through the turbine, 
uh, water from deep in the ocean, cold water will cool it down and bring it back to liquid. So this liquid is then returned back to the beginning of the loop. So that's why it's called as a closed loop. And in the open loop, we get rid of the low boiling point intermediate fluid here. So instead, we just evaporate the warm sea water into a low pressure chamber. And then the surface water is pumped into, uh, th this pressure difference is used uh, to uh, turn a turbine and create electricity. And then there are more efficient current ones, which are called hybrid, which is a combination of both open and closed. And uh, uh, this doesn't use uh, intermediate fluid, but it can produce electricity and desalinized water, you know, that can be used, uh, that can have further uses. Uh, here's an example. Apart from creating electricity, we have a fresh desalinized water that can be used for drinking or irrigation. And the cold water can also be used for um, uh, air conditioning. And here's an example of how that water can be used for mariculture, like growing sushi nori or kelp and phytoplankton and for like agriculture kind, uh, fisheries kind of uh, technologies. Moving on to the next one, uh, oh, the type of energy from the ocean called wave energy. Again, if you've been on the beach, you see how uh, the waves are very predictable. So th this energy depends on the motion of the waves. And the motion of the wave is because of the wind that goes over it, right? And the wind is because of solar energy. So in other words, energy from the ocean is, in, is directly related to solar energy. And um, again, the potential is tremendous. Here, see, it can make up to two to three uh, million watts tetrawatts of energy from the waves. And that is like twice the energy needed by humanity. So large waves, right, are found in at 30 to 60 degree latitude in both the North and South hemispheres. Even if you could harvest 0.1% of the wave energy, we could supply five times more of the energy demand of the world. So when the world is talking about transitioning to clean energy, sustainable energy, renewable energy, energy security, and localized energy production. So that's why the potential for wave energy is just tremendous. Let's see how it works. So this is the an example of the one that you find on the seacoast. So here, uh, see the waves are hitting this uh, concrete structure on the coast. So this chamber is set on the rock face. And the tidal power will force water into the chamber. It forces the water. And it creates a compressed air column here. It's called as a, this oscillating water column will make a, a pressure difference in this chamber here. And that will turn a turbine that will produce electricity. And then that is uh, you know, put in the grid. And here's a GIF that shows how this, uh, high pressure turns the turbines. There are so many other technologies that have been developed to capture wave energy. There are absorbers, attenuators, oscillation wave columns, overtopping and inverted pendulum devices. So you might have seen pictures like this on TV. Uh, let me briefly go over some of the uh, main technologies, they are all in developmental stages and some of them are very successfully running in different parts of the world. A point absorber is uh, a common one. So this is a floating structure that's, that's absorbing energy from all direction uh, because of movement of water in the surface. So you can see this, this buoy that is uh, actually connected. Um, so it's floating here on the waves, but it is uh, actually anchored to the base here. So it converts the motion of the moving water on, on the top surface into electricity. So it's depending on the rise and fall of waves. So these are called point absorbers and they look like this. So what you're seeing on top, it's like tip of the iceberg. The heavy part is under the water. 
here is a attenuator. So it looks like these floating uh, uh, tubes here, the floating device. It'll usually operate parallel to the wave direction and it's kind of riding the waves. So these devices, because of the movement of the waves will capture the energy uh, in these arms as the wave passes through it. Here is a oscillating water column and this is what it will look like. It's partially submerged structure and it encloses a column of air above the column of water. It will have a collector that will funnel the waves into a structure below the water line, causing the water column to rise and fall. This will alternatively pressurize and depressurize the air column. See, so it's going up and down, pushing and pulling at the turbine, uh, which will create electricity. So many of the things I'm talking about are offshore devices that will capture the either the ocean wave or the current, uh, waves in this case, in order to create electricity. The overtopping device looks like this. It is a partially submerged uh, uh, structure. So here, a collector will funnel the waves over the top of the structure into a reservoir, like so. And as the water runs back out to the sea from the reservoir, reservoir it will turn a turbine that will uh, uh, make electricity. Here's the last one, which is the oscillating verve surge converter. So here, this device will capture the wave energy without using a collector, but just by using the relative motion between the float and a fixed uh, reaction point. So the float, it's also called as a flap, it will oscillate along a given axis, along an axis. And the mechanical energy that is extracted from the motion from this reference. So here there is an oscillator, it oscillates uh, that will uh, generate electricity. The next one is tidal power. So here uh, you can see that the turbine is mounted on a foundation. So it's like below the water level. And it reminds me of a like a windmill, you know, the wind energy uh, blades. So it's more, because of its weight, because of just the weight of the structure, it is it, it kind of sinks to the bottom of the floor. So it is set in the seabed. There's no drilling necessary because the weight is enough to keep it in place. And then the tidal currents will cause the blades to rotate. That will spin a turbine that will generate electricity. And then there are underwater cables that will carry the electric current to our offshore uh, grids. So because it's all underwater, it is aesthetically pleasing and uh, you know, it's also uh, better for the environment. So what are the pros and cons of ocean energy? It is green energy, renewable and sustainable, very low levels of pollution, and it is very predictable. So the energy supply is constant. There is no green gas emissions, no dependency on fossil fuels or depending on other countries. It's very domestic. And most of them are offshore. So we are not using up land space. There is no noise pollution. Uh, it is not dependent on like other weather conditions. Lifespan is high and it's very efficient, but everything is in the beginning stages of har harvesting this potential. And most, like most of the cons or disadvantages that we've seen in other uh, renewable energy sources also apply here. Initial cost of establishing it is very high. Maintenance cost is high. Uh, um, destruction to the environment, you know, because it, it is occupying, you know, a niche in the ocean. So it will affect the marine life, maybe biodiversity loss, uh, changes in salinity. If you're using the salinity technology, it is, this technology is not mature yet. There's a lot of STEM innovation that has been like poured into this technology. So about the future of ocean energy, its potential is just endless. And maybe this is the solution 
as we transition to green energy. So here is a statement from the International Renewable Energy Agency. So it says the ocean energy is expected to have a huge role in cutting global carbon emissions over the next few decades. And it can supply up to 4% of the world's future energy by 2050, which is 881 gigawatts, which is very, very substantial. So these are the main points in the lecture, and I hope that was helpful.